subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act Hello viewers welcome to News Week South Asia a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations let's begin with the headlines first Pakistan continues to provide leadership to terror groups across South Asia says UN Security Council Pakistan army and ISI training dozens of terrorists to launch attacks in India and Afghanistan And car bomb attack in Afghanistan kills several on eve of Eid ceasefire. Pakistan not only breeds and harbors some of the most dreaded terrorists in its own territory but also provides constant support to other terrorist groups such as Al-Qaeda, Taliban and Islamic State in neighboring countries to spread chaos across South Asia. Reiterating this fact is a report by UN Security Council that has accused Pakistan for providing leadership and recruitments to terror organizations across South Asia. A report. A report by the United Nations Security Council has highlighted how Pakistani nationals continue to provide leadership to the terror groups operating across South Asia and the extent of involvement by the country when it comes to terrorism Pakistani nationals remain at the leadership levels in terror groups such as Al Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent Islamic state in Iraq and the Levant Khurasan and Tehrik-e-Taliban Pakistan The report submitted by the 1267 monitoring committee of the UNSC said the current and former head of the Islamic state of Iraq and the Levant Khurasan province Aslam Farooqi and Ziaul Haq are Pakistani nationals and Pakistan born Osama Mahmood is the current head of Al Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent similarly Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan which is responsible for carrying out multiple attacks and killing hundreds of civilians is led by a Pakistan based UN designated terrorist Noor Wali Mahsood it is just not only the leadership but the recruitment is also being provided by Pakistan the UN report has revealed that around 6000 to 6500 pakistani terrorists are present in neighboring afghanistan and most of them belong to the tehreek e taliban pakistan a pakistan based terror organization india has been repetitively telling the united nations as well as the rest of the world that pakistan is an epicenter of global terrorism they not only fund terrorists they also provide recruits and leadership to al qaeda to Taliban and to TTP for spreading chaos and mayhem in South Asia world ought to take a very serious note of this because in the present day corrected world chaos and mayhem in one one place quickly affects other countries as well hence for larger good of the human kind it is time that the world acts very strongly against Pakistan The UN report further highlights the fact that terror groups such as the Taliban, Al Qaeda, Islamic State and TTP are working in cahoots with each other to spread mayhem across South Asia. According to the UN Security Council, Al Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent operates under the Taliban umbrella from Afghanistan's Nimroz, Helmand and Kandhar provinces. The report said that Al Qaeda is covertly active in 12 afghan provinces with at least 600 terrorists in afghanistan and its leadership maintains a close contact with the haqqani network which functions under the leadership of the afghan taliban the effect of a revived al qaeda has to be watched at this time 
because Pakistan is being pushed into a corner and Pakistan has its people who are actually leaving and joining Tariqe Taliban, Al-Qaeda. They shift loyalty from one to the other because their aim is the same, a Sunni domination, a Sunni domination of jihad, propagating the religion, and they do it even to die. The Islamic State of Levant, Khorasan and Al-Qaeda are further entrenching in regions beyond their historical stronghold in Afghanistan and are attracting Taliban and former TTP members to join their group. Besides, both the organizations and their global affiliates are trying to expand their influence and ideologies in other countries as well, including India, Maldives and Myanmar. The report also noted that Al-Qaeda is planning to launch attacks in the Indian subcontinent, bearing in mind that Al-Qaeda in Indian subcontinent or AQIS reportedly has between 150 and 200 members from Bangladesh, India, Myanmar and Pakistan. Meanwhile, the Islamic State is also working with networks of supporters in the Maldives and has a significant number of ISIL operatives in India too. Right from the inception of ISIL and ISIS, they've been trying to extend the influence in India, Myanmar, Nepal, Bangladesh, as well as the Maldives. As far as India is concerned, they have not been able to make any headway whatsoever. And the government of India and the security forces are pretty alert. And I don't think they will be able to do very much as far as India is concerned. Similarly, Myanmar's government is pretty active. And I am not too sure whether they will be able to really establish themselves in a major way as far as Myanmar is concerned. Maldives is an area of critical concern to us because the previous government was supportive of the activities of the, these people and they were in fact encouraging them. The present government is acting very strongly but to what extent they will succeed only time will tell. Meanwhile, the violent terror organizations across South Asia are also viewing the global pandemic of coronavirus to spread tentacles and advance their propaganda. Even the UN chief a few days back specifically stressed on the fact that terrorist groups active in South Asia are looking forward to taking inadequate advantage of the coronavirus pandemic situation. And this report is yet again a clear manifestation of this ever-growing scourge and a grim reminder that terrorists are constantly plotting against people, no matter which part of the world they are living in. Pakistan's complicity in providing leadership and training to terrorists is getting exposed at all fronts. While the UNSC report reveals details about the Pakistani leadership leading the terror groups, such as the Islamic State of Kharasan province and Al-Qaeda in Indian subcontinent, a separate intelligence report informs that Taliban terrorists too are being trained by Pakistani army in Jalalabad to launch terror attacks in India and Afghanistan. A video released on Voice of Jihad shows one of the training camps of Taliban terrorists in Badakhshan. We bring you details. Pakistan's notorious inter-services intelligence is orchestrating fresh terror attacks in India and Afghanistan. The Special Service Group or SSG of the Pakistani Army has trained 20 Taliban terrorists in Jalalabad to launch attacks in Jammu and Kashmir, reveal informed sources. To facilitate such an attack, Pakistan is trying to infiltrate a group of 20 to 30 terrorists from the line of control, the Indo-Nepal border and the international border. Reportedly, the infiltrating group of terrorists comprises jaish e mohammed and Taliban trained by the Pakistan army. The mission is very clear. The Pakistan army and ISI have got together and now they have decided their fixed targets in India and Afghanistan both places where they're getting opposition and uh, the terrorists are being trained properly now as they know that both sides in Afghanistan and in India, the defense forces, the security forces are now properly alert. Their equipment is uh, very effective, their weapons are very effective and the tactics are very effective. So everything now is being taught into them in a professional manner and let me tell you one thing, the terrorists have got latest weapons and latest equipment. So you, if you will see in the, in the coming season, their attacks will be very 
I mean, they'll try to make it very effective. Sources in the Indian intelligence agencies also reveal that Pakistani spy agency ISI is planning to carry out a terrorist attack in Ram Jan Bhumi Temple in India's Uttar Pradesh city Ayodhya on August 15. The Pakistani agency has planned to send three to five groups of terrorists in Ayodhya for the attack with VVIPs on the target to leave large-scale impact. Meanwhile, the security system in India has been tightened to keep a check on the activities in Delhi, Ayodhya and Kashmir. The relations between Pakistan and India have never been good. We have fought wars. They have been defeated in almost all. But they have never given up their hatred towards India. Secondly, their hatred uh, particularly rests on religious basis because Pakistan was created on two nation theory and it never accepted any kind of what would be the definition worldwide, any, any kind of uh, uh, inclusive relation. Obviously, Pakistan will feel that uh, whatever is the big day for India, a big national day for India, should be disturbed to the extent possible. And this is why I feel some kind of a trouble either around Ayodhya or at Ayodhya or elsewhere to score some kind of brownie points which will be uh, uh, against all international norms. ISI's activities highlight Pakistan's complicity in aiding anti-India terrorist groups and the Taliban to create unrest in India and Afghanistan. Reports from various intelligence agencies and global anti-terror committees and institutions consistently expose Pakistan Army and its ISI's role in training and recruitment of terrorists for regionally focused terrorist groups. Recently, the Pentagon in its report on Afghanistan said, the Afghanistan-Pakistan border region remains a sanctuary for various terror groups. These groups include Al-Qaeda Corps, Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent, Lashkar-e-Taiba, Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan, and ISIS Khurasan. Pakistan and ISI, they have got their trainers. They are getting a lot of funds from outside. They have got a lot of money from the radical Islamist nation who support, even in a covert manner, the, the um, radical movement of Pakistan. In fact, they take advantage of that. And this is how they are running camps with proper facilities. Did they believe you me, the training in, includes uh, sea training, includes uh, commando training, mining of the sea, mining of the ships. Everything is included in that. While Afghan security forces are carrying out strikes to eliminate such terror camps from their territory and the Afghan-Pakistan border, the Taliban too is not backing off from launching offensives against Afghan security forces. A joint operation conducted by National Directorate of Security and Afghan National Security Forces recently neutralized 31 terrorists in Khogiani district of Afghanistan. Out of 31, 13 were reported to be Pakistani terrorists belonging to jaish e muhammad The joint operation came as Afghanistan's permanent representative to the UN, Adila Raz, wrote to the President of the Security Council over continued violations of its territory by Pakistani military forces and asked the 15-nation UN body to take necessary measures and actions to end them if the situation is not de-escalated bilaterally. On July 15th, Pakistan military forces began unprovoked artillery attacks against Afghan border posts and civilian residential areas in the Sarakano and Asadabad districts of Kunar province, killing six civilians and injuring four members of the Afghan National Defense and Security Forces. Pakistan wants to play a stellar role, particularly against a any help or any contribution or any assistance that India can provide in getting that Afghanistan problem sorted out. Therefore, the first area of target that Pakistan has is along with its border 
uh, uh, Afghan border along it. The Pakistan government and its intelligence service ISI have been aiding terrorism in the South Asian region by running terrorist training camps in POK and in the Afghan Park border region to continue waging proxy wars against India and Afghanistan. As reports suggest this time too, Pakistan's army and the ISI are planning major attacks in India, but the plans would be reduced to dust as the Indian government and the security forces constantly remain alert and vigilant to foil any such conspiracy against India. While Pakistan is trying hard to revive terrorism in Kashmir, India is committed to fighting all its tricks to stop its western neighbour from inciting terror in the valley. Recently, proactive Indian forces eliminated two terrorists in Jammu Kashmir's capital, Srinagar. And it's not a one-off breakthrough, but the forces have been successful in busting all the nefarious anti-India plots hashed in the corridors of Islamabad and Rawalpindi. Our report. Indian Army, Paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force and Jammu and Kashmir Police are jointly carrying out series of operations to uproot the Pakistan-established network of terrorism from the Kashmir Valley. Continuing with the spate of encounters that have taken place in the valley recently, Indian Army neutralized two terrorists in an encounter in Jammu Kashmir's Srinagar city this week. Based on specific inputs, a search operation was launched by the security forces in Ranbirgarh area during which the terrorists opened fire at the soldiers. The two terrorists were killed in retaliatory fire by the forces. Two terrorists were here. We had some news yesterday evening. We have encountered them here. And both terrorists were killed. Even after surgical strike in POK and uh, such air strike in Balakot, Pakistan has not mended its ways, and it cannot mend its ways. It it it, it is it is uh, a shameless country. It is hell bent upon exporting terror to India, to Jammu and Kashmir. In response to its fallen terrorists and terror networks, Pakistani military immediately escalates the frequency of infiltration attempts of terrorists into Kashmir. This is done by intensifying cross-border shelling at the LOC to provide cover fire to the infiltrating terrorists that even claim the lives of Kashmiri locals living at the border villages. This week again, Pakistani troops resorted to unprovoked cross-border firing at the LOC. Last week, the shellings from Pakistan's side killed three Indian civilians, including a woman and a minor in Punj. If you have guts, Pakistan army, come. Let's face each other in the battlefield. So you are killing civilians who are innocent? How, what, what they have done to you? If you have any grievance, then you face Indian Army. Let's sort out this issue once for all. This everyday affair is not correct. You have no business to target civilians. You fight your battle with military. One military fights with another military. One Pakistan military it's, 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 it's a matter of shame that you have handed over your responsibility of fighting Indian Army to terrorist organization. You espouse them, you fund them, you protect them, you train them, you export them. It is disgraceful. The sharp increase in attempts of infiltration of terrorists, cross-border shelling and explosive attacks from Pakistan indicate that the country has never been and will never be ready to establish peace and accord. Frustrated by its failures in unleashing mayhem in Kashmir, Islamabad has been pursuing new terror plots to attack the forces. But vigilant Indian security forces, equipped with appropriate intelligence system, have been lucratively foiling all of them. 
An expected spell of reprieve in war zone Afghanistan suffered a major setback as the country witnessed a deadly bomb blast in the eastern Logar province. The attack came before a three-day ceasefire by Taliban was to begin in the country for the Muslim festival of Eid al-Adha. Meanwhile, the intra-Afghan peace talks between Afghan government and the Taliban seems to be moving ahead as both the sides have agreed to solve prisoner dispute and cease the violence, a report. A deadly bomb blast struck the Puli Alam city, the capital of the eastern Logar province, which killed at least 18 people including Afghan security personnel and wounded several others. The police officials said that the explosion targeted Afghan security forces but civilian casualties are also feared. So far, no group claimed the responsibility for this attack. However, Taliban promptly denied its involvement in this brutal assault. This attack yet again indicates the active presence of several anti-peace groups in the country which are trying to gain the leverage from the long-delayed peace process between the Afghan government and the Taliban. This is certainly a very dangerous trend. The Taliban has assured that it will be able to act against such terrorist groups and ideologically also Taliban has got no commonality with the ISK. Nevertheless, if there is a security vacuum in Afghanistan, there will be a large number of Islamic State fighters from other parts of the world who will migrate here to Afghanistan, occupy the security space and carry out complex terrorist attacks, which will imply a large number of civilian casualties, a large number of casualties of foreigners, and large number of casualties also on the security forces. So the important premise is that there should be no vacuum in the security space and the Taliban, if it comes on board, has to also contribute to targeting the ISK. The latest attack comes as the long-delayed peace talks are appearing back on track after Taliban announced a three-day ceasefire during the Muslim festival of Eid al-Adha and called on its fighters to avoid attacking Afghan forces and to not enter government-controlled areas. Welcoming the move by Taliban, Afghan government also announced the reciprocal three-day ceasefire. The Taliban proposed the ceasefire after President Ghani pledged to release all 5,000 Taliban militants as part of the prisoner swap agreement signed by the US and Taliban and urged the militant group to get ready for talks in a week. Meanwhile, a Taliban spokesman Sohail Shaheen said the group will also release the remaining prisoners of the Afghan government by Eid for goodwill, thus completing the total 1,000. Now, this development has once again raised prospect of an extended cessation of violence and revived the long-delayed launch of direct talks between the government and insurgents over a permanent ceasefire and a power-sharing deal. Today, one would say that the development appears positive. However, the nature of ideological divide in, in Afghanistan, the very nature of the non-state actor Taliban, the pulls and pressures within and the pulls and pressures which will be applied on the Taliban from outside, and here I specifically mean Pakistan, would not guarantee that tomorrow will be the same. Hence, we have to make sure that the Taliban sticks to the word which it is given today and that is it will start holding the talks with the government as soon after Eid as possible. Frantic efforts are being made by United States to clear the way for intra-Afghan talks, a step forward in the execution of the U.S.-Taliban peace deal. U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan, Zalmay Khalilzad, wished the Afghan people a peaceful holiday and also thanked the Afghan security forces for their commitment. 
Khalilzad also held talks with Ashraf Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah, head of the High Council for National Reconciliation, and discussed about the need to keep violence down by all sides after the ceasefire and the completion of the prisoner exchange to pave the way for intra-Afghan talks. But peace looks still an elusive dream in the water nation as the scale of violence has significantly increased since the US Taliban peace deal. Portraying the grim picture of Afghanistan's situation, Ghani said 3,560 Afghan troops had been killed and 6,781 wounded since signing the deal. He said 775 civilians had also been killed and another 1,609 wounded and 689 kidnapped. Taliban may be using violence for two purposes. One is as a negotiating strategy with the Afghan government and the second is to increase their geographic control in, in Afghanistan so that from the rural areas they are able to gain control of the urban centers, which will again enhance their capability for negotiating when the talks are undertaken. However, this level of violence is definitely not acceptable from any party. It has to be ensured that Taliban commits itself to reduction of the violence and they cannot target their own Afghan brethren just as they have not targeted the United States and NATO forces based on the agreement of 29 February, some sort of a commitment has to be obtained that the violence will be reduced before the talks begin. The upcoming intra-Afghan talks have certainly created a sense of optimism about ending this 19-year-long war in Afghanistan. Achieving an acceptable peace agreement, however, will not be easy. It is still uncertain whether the Taliban is serious about reaching a deal with the Afghan government, who they denounce as puppets, or have just agreed to them as a ploy to get US forces to leave the country. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shreya Savijay signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.